you're seeing a lot of really stretched out charts. And again, uh, like I said, we really have to stick to <clears throat> the names, in my opinion, that are, um, you know, coming out of a tight range. And if you don't see that tight range, it's very, very tough uh, to continue to push stocks at these orbital levels. So let me give you guys some idea of what I'm looking at, what I mean by uh, tight ranges. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Uh, first and foremost, I want to wish uh, all the phenomenal dads uh, and the single moms uh, a happy uh, Father's Day weekend. Uh, again, a parent's job is absolutely the most crucial part of life. Uh, I don't care what you do for a living, how much money you want to make or you think you're making. There's nothing more gratifying than raising a child and uh, putting that child in a position to succeed uh, in life and whatever he or she is uh, focused and has a passion for. So God bless all you guys, especially the single moms or the single dads out there uh, to, for doing and continuing to doing uh, a, such a phenomenal job. Uh, if you are brand new to the channel, guys, welcome aboard. Thank you very much for spending you know, 10, 15 minutes with us. Like, share. Uh, comment. We always love comments to hear what you know, what your view is on, on the markets, what your uh, experience level is, and from your point of view of what you think is going to happen next. It's always a, a great way to engage and always meet uh, absolutely new people. So welcome aboard, welcome aboard, subscribe, and all that good stuff to continue uh, supporting the channel. Thank you very much. So let's talk about the numbers. Uh, numbers continue to be uh, pretty staggering. This is a chart of uh, the S and P. Uh, S&P is up 26% from uh, last, what was it, last November, last October lows. Staggering, that's 2.6% on the week. Uh, now, you know, it's, it's, it's absolutely pretty, pretty amazing. Uh, the NASDAQ composite will look at the Qs as a point of reference here, up 3.3% uh, for the week. That is uh, best uh, performing week since last March. Uh, it is up. 35%, almost 36% for the first six months of the year. And, you know, that's kind of where I want to start off with. Um, you hear a lot of people talking about the market is overbought, the market is overbought. And when you look at, you know, when you look at the, the tape and you go, wow, it does look super overbought. I don't think the market's overbought. I, I think you're looking at the, the tape a little bit. Um, I don't want to use the word misguided. Obviously, everybody has an, has an opinion, but you're looking at it a little bit skewed, the information a little skewed. Uh, the market, in my opinion, is overextended, right? We've been talking about that for weeks. Doesn't mean you're not going to buy stocks. Doesn't mean I'm not going to buy stocks. It's still, still phenomenal action in the market. It has nothing to do with that. I can make a case um, that the market is overextended. Again, you have this incredible, especially the last three-week rally. Uh, the Qs went from 329 to three, you know, to 370s, right? That's pretty extended. But the market's not overbought, okay? It, because if you go back to... 2022, we were down, you know, 31 and a half, 32 percent for the year. Then, if you look at the calendar year, right, we are net up a little bit less than four percent. So we're not overbought. We're just a little bit overextended on this interval. Uh, the one thing that I keep on seeing, especially new traders, they don't believe it's going to end. And, and again, it sounds like a broken record. But anybody's been trading for a long time. Uh, even up here at these levels, you're starting to get very, very defensive. Doesn't mean the market's going to come in. It doesn't mean you know, we're looking to start shorting stocks at the open. Doesn't, you know, we're not saying any of that. It's more of the continuation of overextended stocks, right? Overextended names continue to print new highs. But the only difference that we saw uh, this week versus last week is the options market. And in, in the options market, if you've been watching this broadcast uh, for a long, long time, you know, in the last three, four years, how uh, you know, I've, I've been paying attention to a lot of the, the options market because that's really dic dictating short-term uh, institutional money flow. And unlike the last three weeks that we've been seeing ridiculous nonstop out of the money, wh whether they're rolling up or whatever the case may be, uh, deep out of the money calls, we really didn't see that Thursday into Friday. And that's and maybe it's something, maybe it's nothing. You can make a case that, well, you know what? Uh, the market is closed on Monday. Maybe people just weren't 
uh, putting down bets for the next week, losing an extra day uh, before expiration. Maybe that resumes uh, come Tuesday. Maybe it does, right? Maybe it does. But this is really the first week uh, that I didn't see, for example, like, you know, really massive option flow coming in on, on Tesla for this week. Okay? It's, it's been on an incredible car, magic carpet ride. Uh, same thing with NVIDIA, same thing with Amazon, uh, same thing with Meta. It's like, like it's like almost like the big players, for example, left early, you know, Thursday, maybe into Friday, uh, went to the Hamptons, whatever the case may be. And just, there wasn't just, a, it, there just wasn't panic buying uh, going into this week. And now if you combine that with, well, you believe the market is a little overextended and you could be the biggest bull in the world and you'll turn around and go, well, you know, the cues were, you know, three weeks ago, you know, 50 points, you know, 50 points lower. You know, it, it's very, very tough to start a position. Trading is a different story. We will always find ranges. We'll always find trades, upside pivots, you know, downside pivots. But from, from the point of starting starting a swing position when the, the Nasdaq just rallied, the Qs just rallied 50 points in three weeks, even the most aggressive bull is going to say, well, maybe not now, right? Maybe not now. And that's exactly where we kind of are right now. We're a little bit stretched out uh, in the interval on all the indexes. you got the Qs. Uh, we talked about the spies, right? Just an absolutely uh, stellar move on the spies. Uh, the IWM, if you guys remember, the IWM broke out uh, above this 182 level. Uh, it's doing incredibly well. Again, that was just kind of basing out here. Uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, again, up 1.3% uh, for the week. Again, it's only 30 Dow components, but again, you could clearly see that the momentum in the market uh, is still <clears throat> frustrating. You know, the perma bear, and I get it, and everybody gets it. Uh, one thing we always talk about uh, every single day, especially at Morning Strategy, is and, and you started seeing that towards the end of this week a lot of people not just you know not just the, at the webinar I, I think just a lot of new traders uh, overall they're way too excitable right uh when, when you start and, and when you start looking at 28 different symbols at the open what about this one what about that one what about this one what about that one you, you can tell you could tell subconsciously how the FOMO is, is, is building up right you, you, nobody should be looking at 18 different like I shouldn't be getting 18 different symbols at the open. And if I had to ask another 300 people, they would give me another 300 symbols. Everybody's relaxed, right? Especially at the open. And you saw that uh, you firsthand what happens if you're over uh, excitable, come, you know, kind of at the open. Like, I give you a perfect example. Like, look at Microsoft's chart, right? Here's a 60 minute view on Microsoft. So, Microsoft had a great run on Thursday uh, into Friday session. They, they ran this thing up five pre market. And what they did was they pulled right away. You know, so you're talking about a move. Uh, a ten dollar move from top to bottom uh, on Microsoft because people were getting too excitable. It, most important part we're always remember in this type of environment, guys. Number one, remember every single great market. Okay, and you could go back to history. It's not just me saying it. I've traded uh, in two thousand. I traded in uh, the the generational bottom of two thousand uh, and nine. I traded in the pandemic uh, bottom of March. Uh, March of 2020, how did it all end, right? It all ended exactly the same way. The end result is still higher, right? Absolutely. But from, from the trading point of view, from the day-to-day -day consistency of organic flow in the market, the market always is going to end its magnificent run. The question is, do you have the visors on, right? We talk about this all the time. And the key is every single morning, again, have your plan, right? Absolutely. If you love, you know, for example, right? If you're looking for a stock like Tulo that's consolidating really, really well, Right, watch it, but don't get excited, right? Don't get excited, breathe. It doesn't have to confirm Tuesday. It doesn't have to confirm Wednesday. Hell, it doesn't have to confirm at all. You always have a plan. You always have in the back of your mind that, hey, great markets in the past have always been pulled. Always have a contingency plan, right? Know the channel, know the bottom channels of the previous day's range for all the high-flying stocks and just be wary. Hey, if these high fly stocks and as great as Tesla has been, as great as NVIDIA has been, as great as Microsoft has been, be conscious, right? Don't be naive. Be conscious. Hey, if they do start losing the previous day's range, well, I can have a viable two-sided play here. The market's been great. It's been linear. We've taken advantage of the market, but just in case, right? I know it sounds crazy. The market's going to have a down day, but just in case, be prepared on both sides. So you're not caught off guard. And your most important part is, guys, nobody should be starting a new swing <clears throat> Tuesday, on, a, on, on especially in the NASDAQ market, where the Qs are up 50 points in, in, in three weeks. It just doesn't make any sense. You're literally, forget about jumping off the 12th floor, you're jumping off the 212th floor. You, you, I think everybody can, I, I think everybody can agree. I, I don't believe 
uh, you know, everybody is so uh, unbiased, uh, excuse me, so biased in their opinion and so close-minded that I think even the biggest bulls will have to agree the market needs a healthy rest. It really does. One day, two day, three day, just for some of these charts to reset. Wouldn't it be nice? And again, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but wouldn't it be nice if NVIDIA could come and just re retest the five day moving average? Is that really crazy? That's 10 points from here. Who's, who's you know, nobody's talking about NVIDIA going down to 300, right? But just an orderly back test. And if you are permable, right, let these stocks breathe a little bit. Start buying some stock on the five-day moving average. And if they hold the five-day moving average, you know the short-term trend is still intact and you can still go long. Uh, even a name, you know, like Tesla has been an absolute rock star, right? At least let it pull into the five-day. Maybe, you know, maybe even come into the 10-day. It, it's so much more beneficial for every single stock to get a rest so these charts can reset. So when you're buying your next leg up, you say to yourself, okay, they held the five day, they held the 10 day, it's time to resume, right? I'm gonna patiently wait for the next channel, for the previous channel to confirm, to get long. That's understandable, right? That's what a bull market is. And again, if you look at, for example, Tesla, right? Look look, what, it, look what it's been doing since, uh, since May, right? You see this orange line? Every single time it hit the orange line, bounced, bounced, right? Bounce, bounce, even the last time, right? Just gap down, reclaim and bounce. That's kind of what you want with every single stock. If you believe this bull market is just a little bit overextended, but not overbought, and we believe uh, it could have an additional, what, five, seven, eight percent run uh, for the rest of the year. If you're in that camp, you, you really, really need these stocks to reset. It's just so much easier, so much mentally uh, easier to buy stocks when they retrace than continue to push up 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 you know does it look like tesla's going to 300 absolutely is it is it crazy to say at some point there'll be a back test taking out the previous range lows and if you guys remember i recorded you know i recorded saying this echoed the same sentiment about a week ago two weeks ago and tesla never went down right doesn't mean i'm betting tesla's going to go lower i'm just conscious of the whole market not just tesla not just nvidia not just amazon or meta uh, or microsoft that there is a potential based on historical data, okay, in my experience in the last 24 years, that these type of linear markets will give an aggressive back test. Uh, and if you are a perma bull, again, just, just again, be reasonable, right? Be reasonable. Uh, and if you are, you are looking to initiate a position in Tesla or NVIDIA, is, you know, the most practical question, the most feasible question to ask is, if you still haven't, right, after this magnificent run that Tesla has gone from 152 to 263 in the last in the last month would it be really feasible to put on your first trade on tesla come tuesday and that's kind of my whole point it's not that tesla's not going higher it's not like the video is going higher just be wary of where you are uh buying stock the air up here is very very thin and it's very very important that you don't start uh putting on positions based on the fear of missing out if the if this market truly does have more legs you know it's going to do what it has to do our job as traders, I don't care if you're bull bear or delta neutral, our job as traders is to put ourselves in the position that we're getting the safest entry, not the sexiest, the safest entry. The entree has been eaten, right? 152 to 273, the meat of the bone is gone. It's only crumbs left and you're entering during the crumbs. So be very, very conscious of that, guys. Just stay, again, I understand nobody wants to miss, especially in your first uh, early years nobody wants to miss that runaway train but you know 152 to 263 it's not exactly that the train is still in the building right like look, look, look you know look at the video i mean look look at some of these moves have been insane you know the video since uh you know since may the 24th has gone from 300 to 340 i mean for 440 i mean it's 135 137 point move so again in my opinion i think just for the organic nature of the market itself for market structure and, ev and having everybody kind of be comfortable sellers and buyers be comfortable i think the market again is a little bit overextended on this interval um but not overbought right not overbought we're still only three four percent net from 2022 uh and that's where where the upside still has uh potential so going into this week and again you're going to notice uh that it's going it's harder and harder uh it really is harder and harder to find you know, really tight charts. I mean, everything just went nuts this week. If you've been watching this broadcast, uh, Letter U has gone, uh, and Letter U has been a great trader. Letter U has been an absolute phenomenal trader. Uh, AI has been an absolute phenomenal trader. Even Oracle, man. I traded Oracle 
on, what was it, Wednesday or Thursday, even Oracle had a really, really big run. So you're seeing a lot of really stretched out charts. And again, uh, like I said, we really have to stick to <clears throat> the names, in my opinion, that are, um, you know, coming out of a tight range. And if you don't see that tight range, it's very, very tough uh, to continue to push stocks at these orbital levels. So let me give you guys some idea of what I'm looking at, what I mean by uh, tight ranges. So look at a stock like Tulo. Like I said uh, at the early, uh, at the early part of uh, of um, of the report uh, of the recording, you know, it's getting tight, right? It had this great, great run, and now it's kind of going sideways. Does it have to confirm tomorrow? Does it have to confirm Thursday? Or Friday? Does it have to confirm at all? No. But at least from here, and this is kind of what we talk about jumping off the first floor. If you're wrong, you're wrong at the top of the range. You're not buying, you know, in the video up here where you came and see the, you know, see the arrow. So, you know, I'm watching a name like Tulo. Uh, I'm watching a name uh, like NNOX, right? NOX had a really, really big run. Now it's just building a channel here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, Tuesday will be day eight. You know, maybe if it starts building above this channel here, maybe this thing will wake up. Uh, a name, for example, like ENVX, right? Not your prototypical names, but again, you can see and make a, a, a feasibility study that at least the range is real, right? The re range is real. It's long drawn out. And if it gets above the range, that's where you want to take your shots. And again, look at this range here that started in April. So keep an eye on that to the downside. Again, we have to be prepared to the downside, right? Look at a name like First Solar, okay? I had a big, big run. It just, you know, has not participated, broke the bottom of the range here. Now it's just sitting at the bottom of the range again. If it starts building down, the market gets pulled. You know, keep an eye on this thing. Uh, look at a name like uh, NDAQ, right? Look at, look at this thing. It, it blew up on earnings, and now it's just bear flagging. Who knows? If the market gets pulled, you know, maybe this thing from the bottom range can confirm its earnings lows. But the key is be prepared. Look at a name like Roblox. Right? Look at a name like Roblox. Roblox has gotten rejected three times at the top of the range. Maybe this is the week it finally gets above. So the moral of the story is, guys, look, in my opinion, I think the market probably has more legs. I would really, really like, and I think I can speak for a lot of people, for, for some of these stocks to come in uh, for two, three days this week just to reset, reset the chart so we can get a better range coming off the bottom than we get the top. And if you do believe this is a bull market, I think this is needed. Uh, it's well-deserved for the Bulls, and it's only going to benefit everybody uh, in the long run. So, guys, have a wonderful, wonderful Father's Day weekend. God bless to all you guys once again. Uh, we are off on Monday, so get yourself some rest, get yourself some food, get yourself some smiles, some memories, and make sure to get yourself some love in your heart. Guys, God bless. I will see you all on Tuesday. Take care.